You'll notice that we're in a new platform. We're now using Zoom webinar um, to increase accessibility. And um, I just want to say welcome to, to today's edition, um, hosted by the Mental Health Center of Denver, and thanks to our presenting sponsor, Cigna. Wellbeing Live is a series of short virtual talks, workshops, and classes given by our experts from across the organization on topics to help support your well-being and the well-being of the people around you. We also look to partners like Curious Sunshine to help us in bringing um, well-being tips and tricks to people. Um, please note today's event is being recorded. And my name is Amanda DeGruccio and I work in the development office at the Mental Health Center of Denver. Today, we are excited to hear from Sarah Iverson, who will talk about mindful play. Um, she's of Curious Sunshine, and I'm sure she'll tell you lots about that. If you have a question during the presentation, please submit it in the chat, which you can access through the chat button at the bottom of your window. Or you can choose the raise hand button to share your question with us out loud. We will acknowledge as many questions as we can during the Q&A section of the event, which we'll reserve for the end. All right, and with that, I'm gonna go ahead and throw it over to Sarah. Sarah? Hello, hello. So I'll give a quick background about myself and then we'll go through a little exercise and then I'll talk a little bit more about mindful and play and then we'll take some questions. So um, my name is Sarah and I am the owner manifester of Curious Sunshine. I'm originally from California and I moved to Colorado about four years ago to pursue my master's in environmental leadership at Naropa University. And from there, the um, inspiration behind Curious Sunshine kind of flourished. And now I'm here and Curious Sunshine is gonna be turning two here in about a, in about a month or so. So very exciting. Um, yeah, that's a little bit about me. And um, before I start talking about mindful play, I want to just um, go through a little grounding exercise with everyone. So if you don't mind, um, take a seat or stand, um, whatever you're doing, and I will invite you to um, soften your gaze. Um, and if you're able to close your eyes and just Feel your, feel your feet on the, on the earth, on the ground. And I'll invite you to take a few deep breaths. On the count of three, we'll inhale. Hold. And exhale. One more time. Inhale. Hold and exhale. Awesome, and as you hold that awareness of your breath, I want you to show gratitude and awareness to the earth below you. Keeps you grounded. This planet keeps us safe, holds us, allows us to live our lives, provides life. And let's also bring our awareness to the plane that we're on now, the plane that we share with other plants, animals, the elements, water, fire, earth. And let's breathe into that as well. And finally, let's bring some awareness and gratitude to the earth above us, the skies, the stars, the air, the beings. And let's show gratitude for that as well, providing us oxygen to breathe, an atmosphere to live. You are here now, and that is perfect. a few more breaths I invite you to slowly come back if you had your eyes closed open them start to move your body look at your toes look at your fingers move your shoulders move your head relax your jaw Awesome. 
Well, hopefully everyone is feeling a little bit more grounded. Um, I know it's Friday, so there's probably lots of energy going on. So <laughs> without further ado, we could start the presentation. So let's, uh, let's bring up that first slide. So I'll be presenting on Mindful Play, and this is under my business, Curious Sunshine, which creates mindful, playful, and curious spaces that highlight the Black experience. Next slide, please. So Curious Sunshine has three values. Play, looking at the importance of play on a neural, emotional, and physical, as well as spiritual level. We also focus on mindfulness, so learning the foundations of mindfulness and how to cultivate presence within the natural world. And lastly, we have curiosity. So we explore being inquisitive and embracing our own curiosities and quirks and also celebrating them. Next slide, please. So a little bit more about play. Play is a state of mind. When we're playing, we are fully present uh, and engaged. Uh, play is also a primal activity, so it engages our animal senses. So if you ever find yourself fully engaged in like a game of tag or whatever you do to have fun, um, all of your senses are aware. You're hearing, you're seeing, you're smelling, you're feeling, um, you're fully there, which is, which there's much to say with that. Um, while also, while playing, there's also a bit of experience of freedom of time. So there's so much truth to time flies when you're having fun. Um, <laughs> so when you're playing and you're in the midst of, of being present, time just goes so fast. Um, and there's a lot of science behind play. Um, so not only is play an evolutionary trait um, in that it's essential to our survival and part of our biological drive, this is how we learn what is safe, what is not safe. Um, for animals, for baby animals, this is how they learn how to hunt. They play, they play with each other. If you see um, lion cubs or baby tiger cub, cubs, they're usually play hunting and that just goes to show that play is very essential to survival and humans are one of the few mammals that use play throughout our entire lives um, to keep learning. So while we're playing, this stimulates um, the parts of our brain that helps emotional and cognitive processing and it also helps cultivate new neural connections. So. By playing, you're actually sorting out and figuring out some complex and challenging issues and in a way that's non-judgmental, there's no rules. Uh, you process it the way that you need to and this is what helps build those new neural connections and helps us process our emotions and other situations. And so, I say all this to say that play is very important for adults. As we get older, um, the idea of play becomes kind of shame. Like, what are you doing? You have so much other responsibilities. What are you doing playing? And so we find ourselves holding it in and maybe finding and internalizing our, our play because it's safe on the inside and we won't get as much judgment um, than if we're expressing it outwardly. Um, not only that, but plays a testament to our health. So if you notice, you know, if you have children or if you have a pet and they're not feeling well, you'll know because they're not as playful as they normally are. And the same goes for adults. If we're not feeling that well, the joys that we once had aren't really too present or too prominent in our lives. And so it's a nice little test to see like, how well am I really feeling? Am I able to play in these ways that I used to find joyful. And also, as adults, we um, 
we, as we grow up from children, we have so much more connections, opportunities, competen competencies, and resources. And I feel like these are awesome tools to really innovate how we play and how we spread the joy of play to others. Um, and a little, a little bit of, a little bit more notes. Um, play is recreation because you're recreating the world around you, and you're also recreating the world inside of you. So there's so much to be said in playing that it it helps how we view the world and how we um, process our emotions as we're moving through the world. Next slide, please. So, how can I use play as a mindfulness tool? Um, so play, like mindfulness, is very abstract. Um, and when I say mindfulness, I mean cultivating presence, uh, very similar to the exercise that we did in the beginning where I had everyone just kind of sit and feel the ground and feel the earth and acknowledge the presence that we share with others. Um, so with that, some of the things you could do is be open. So um, as we play, we begin to open our minds and ourselves up to what we really need, what really makes us happy, and what we're really finding challenging at the moment. Um, we can also tap into our truth. So everyone plays differently. And I feel like when we tap into, by being mindful and tapping into what really brings each of us joy in our own unique way, um, we can cultivate a lot more authenticity. And there's so many different types of, of play or players. There's jokesters, if you love pranks and you like telling jokes or, you know, very slapstick, um, explore that. If you're, if you're an explorer, you like finding new things, discovering new things, um, if you like traveling to places uh, to explore and figure out new sensations, new feelings, new smells, dive into that a little bit more. Maybe you're a mover and shaker, you love doing yoga, you love running, you love anything where you're actively in your body, that is a form of play. And so, you know, these things are, there's just so much vastness in the type of play you could you could love making art, you could love collecting things, you could love telling stories. And these are things that if we're mindful of these joys, we could dive into them a little bit deeper and find some play in them. Um, and also take this seriously. I feel like we don't take self-care or play as serious as we do um, a meeting or something work-related or school-related. And our self-care is very important to making sure that we have the capacity to be present and um, be our full selves when it does come time to show up in class or at work or um, any other endeavor. So schedule some time to play, put it in your calendar, uh, make, make a certain day or time for it and um, really be in there to make sure that you maybe set up a play schedule or if you have a game or a puzzle or something that you've always wanted to do save it for that day and look forward to it and honor it you deserve it um, we all deserve it and so give that to yourself next please so how to tap into our fun selves this was uh, the idea of fun self um, is, is something that I am leaning more into. It's like, okay, what does my fun self look like? And I'm sure a lot of people may not even have thought of what a fun self is. Um, and so, yeah, let's, let's figure that out. I invite you to figure out what does that even mean for you? I know me and how I am when I'm being fun and joyful may look different to someone else. So part of that mindfulness is figuring out what that means for you. Um, and there's some tools to help. It's like, where do I start? How do I figure out what brings me joy? Reflect. Um, 
what brought you joy as a child and how can you incorporate it now? I personally loved Legos and I think it's because I like um, building things and putting things together. And so I figure out, okay, well, how can I, how can I bring that back into my life as a grown up now? Uh, let's see, pay attention. So what piques your interest? What do you find yourself doing when you have free time? Um, part of finding your fun self is bringing in that mindfulness. So paying attention to what you're feeling when you're feeling it. So I know that when I am, um, when I'm bored, I take out my Sudoku and I start doing it. And so that tells me like, wow, I really like puzzles. And so really digging into that more so that when I do do a puzzle or a Sudoku, I can really be in the moment and be fully present because I know that this brings me joy. Um, next, be curious. So, I mean, I feel like we take a lot of our day to day as, as face value. And I feel like there's a lot of fun and play to be had once we start being curious about literally everything in our lives. Um, specifically how to dive deeper into what brings us joy and diving deeper into how to add that zest and that excitement into our lives through play. For example, I think I have at the bottom of the slide, um, if you like to cook, um, are you are you curious about that? Why do you like to cook? Um, is there new, ex new cuisines to explore? Is there new spices you could play with? Is there new cooking techniques that you could dive into? Um, is there some bloggers or some um, YouTube videos that support this? And same goes for other little things that we just enjoy. And it's like, wait, I enjoy that. Let's, let's dive into that a little bit more. I mean, we have time to, I know I can't speak for everyone, but I know a lot of us do have this time. So, I mean, let's, let's be curious in that. And then another way is to be aware. So, um, I know for me, my body needs different things depending on the time of the day. So in the mornings, I'm more active. So that's when I'll plan my my moving around, if it's a dance class or even just doing simple stretches um, and having fun doing so. And I realize at night, I'm very much more imaginative. So I'll probably draw or do some art. Um, and so pay attention to your moods also, like what do you need? and just because you like playing a certain way one day doesn't mean that your body or your spirit needs that the second day. So figuring out um, what your body, your spirit, your emotions need at the time and learning how to add some play into that. Um, I would even inspire or invite you guys to create like a play plan for yourself and, you know, write a list of the things that you enjoy doing, um, things that you want to do and, um, things that you like to do to bring you joy when you're maybe feeling sad, you're feeling stressed, um, you're feeling overwhelmed, or hey, if you're bored or if you're happy, uh, <laughs> creating those activities to just have more fun and add more zest and more excitement into your life. Next slide, please. Awesome, so that was my little, um, that was my little lecture on play, I can go, so much in depth on this uh, is such a great topic and something that's not talked about as much. And it should be because, I mean, we need play more than anything right now. And play has so much similarities to mindfulness and meditation. And if we learn how to hone in on both of these skills, um, it could transform our lives and provide so much opportunities, opportunities for joy, liberation, and authenticity. So if you do want to learn more, please stay connected. Um, feel free to visit my website, Curious Sunshine. Um, if you're called to message me, go ahead and send me an email at curiousunshineinfo at gmail.com. Uh, follow me on Facebook and Instagram at Curious Sunshine. And thank you. I think we can move on to questions. Do we have any questions?
That was wonderful. Thank you, Sarah. And we do have a few questions and I would encourage anybody who's attending right now to send their questions via chat. As a reminder, that's that chat button at the bottom, or you can raise your hand and ask your question out loud. Um, one question I'm saying that we've already gotten is, um, how can people who have very different play styles play together in ways that are fulfilling for both individuals? Ooh, that is a good question. So one thing I love about play is that it doesn't necessarily have to have a rule or any structure. It could be frivolous. And so I think the great part of playing is holding that mystery and knowing that you could create anything. And so if, if I like playing one way and I'm dealing with someone who likes to play another way, why not explore what that even looks like? Like, how can we combine the two? There's, there's so many ways we could just combine all the things. So if I like, I'm trying to think of an example. If I love running and that's my thing and someone else loves, what's another play style? And someone else loves exploring and discovering new things, then I would suggest that we go on a walk in a new place. And so I think it's like trying to find that balance of like, I really like this thing and you really like this thing. How can we merge the two? And I think the great part about curiosity is once you are, are curious about that and open to like, what does that even look like? Then you can manifest anything you, anything you want. I mean, if you think, if you look at kids, they just play like the most random games and you're just like, what are you playing? <laughs> and they're just like, I don't know. And you're just like, okay like i think we need to drop back into that vulnerability of like okay i don't know and neither do you so let's not know together and have fun while not knowing i love that yeah the combining the two is really interesting concept yeah. um we have a couple more questions here um as adults how can we learn to separate what we understand as child's play versus adult play how do we kind of embrace that kind of feeling silly feeling? So that vulnerability and that silly feeling is oh is the biggest struggle because you know I'm an adult I have to be serious. Don't look at me. Don't judge me. I, I'm you know I work for this corporation and I pay my bills and mortgage and it's like but you're human though like don't take yourself so seriously. Um, and at the end of the day you're gonna feel better. Um, for doing that. And so I think I think there's much to say on doing what you want. And that is the separation between child play and adult play. I mean, if you're playing um, if you're playing with children, which I'm kind of assuming is what you mean of like, how am I playing with children? You're dropping down to their level. So there's an equal playing field of like, okay, we're both dinosaurs. How am I going to be a dinosaur? But like maybe later on that day, you don't want to be a dinosaur. Maybe you want to play with Legos and not because you have them laying around for, for your child, but because you genuinely like want to. And it's okay for that too. It's, um, it's okay, I think, is we need to just let it, let, ourselves know that it's okay to want these things um even if it does seem silly like if you want to play with barbies by yourself whatever if you need to just reenact that that bitter moment that you had with this co-worker you didn't like or this mean lady at starbucks like do it i mean we all do those dialogues in our head anyways so might as well fully do it um but i think for us as adults play is doing what you want to do in that moment so yeah, no matter how silly yeah, it is. I love that. I love that. It's kind of like a be kind to yourself, be forgiving and... Yes. It's a yes. relief. If you look silly and you laugh at yourself, you're laughing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what's important. That's, that's, yeah, you're absolutely right. Okay, so I'm seeing another question here. Um, what can we do to inspire wanting to play when we're in the midst of the pand pandemic? and feeling really unmotivated. I know I've definitely experienced this. Um, it seems like some of our attendees have experienced this. What are your thoughts? So um, 
I feel like with the pandemic and just a lot of the tension in, um, in society right now, it's more important than ever to, um, to unwind. There was a quote and I cannot remember who said it. So if anyone knows or feels familiar, please let me know. But there was a, what is the quote? If you don't have time to meditate, then that's when you need to. And I think it's that idea of like your brain's so wound up and your body's so wound up and you're just like, I can't, I can't relax in your shoulders and your jaw. And it's like, you need to play. Like nothing's going to go away if you allow yourself an hour to just relax. Um, you're giving your brain time to filter through things. Um, so just, just because there's a lot of tension and a lot of just strange pandemic-y stuff, doesn't mean we have to think about it so hard like give your give your brain a break and then when you come back to it and when you come back to it you either realize it wasn't that big of a deal or um you found a solution so right when you feel like you can't take a break is when you need to take a break you owe yourself 30 minutes nothing's gonna happen if you take 30 minutes for yourself to just i have um to just play, I have a, I have a little thing of Play-Doh. And so if I'm out, I'll just take the Play-Doh and I'm just, this is still playing because I'm, I'm not, I'm not thinking about much. I'm just engaging my senses. I also carry around a tennis ball. So if I'm out on a walk, I could just bounce it, bounce it around. Or if I have some tension, I can like sit and like roll it on my back, on my spine. But I think having a ball on you is always key because you never know when, when you need it, I mean, ball is such a simple thing and it's small, you can put it in your purse, you could bounce it around against the wall, you could play catch with someone. If you see a dog, you could go play catch with the dog. So I think finding and simplifying these playful activities really goes a long way. Awesome. And you know, I have used a lot of actually gaming apps. You said it earlier, Sudoku. I was like, you're speaking my love language right now. Um, because when I need a break, I always find like I'm writing something for mm -hmm. work or whether it be and I'm like, I just get stuck, you know, those brain parts, as they say. And if I do Sudoku, which I'm now recognizing is adult play, is kind of helps freshen things up and I'm able to go back and figure out the words I need. Um, I'm going to have us do one last question here. And then um, I think we'll kind of wrap things up. So this was the last question, Sarah. Um, can play look like reading a favorite book, like quiet play? Like does play have to be loud or any of that kind of thing? What is that, what qualifies as play maybe? Yeah, play is anything that you find yourself doing joyfully um, and fully present. So like like we were just talking about sudoku is a form of play reading is definitely a form of play um yeah if you're enjoying those sci-fi fantasy books that is play you could uh chess is play um what else i mean even walking could be a play uh be a form of play if you do it the right way you know what i mean if you're if you're you know counting how many squirrels you see or you know counting your steps or playing a game and seeing you know how many blue cars you could see while you're walking that is a form of play you're you're taking time and you're engaging with um with your environment you're engaging with yourself and you're in the moment and shameless plug um this is a very quiet activity <laughs> uh this is my book i published um last year and this has lots of coloring pages, um, puzzles, and prompts to write your mantras and affirmations, as well as um, little prompts of how to meditate and connect with nature. So um, there's more information, I think, on my website, which is in the in the notes or in the description on, the, on your guys' website. Um, not to take up too much time. Let me see if I could find a page. Yeah, see, word search, definitely a quiet activity. Um, what else is in here? There's coloring pages, emotional check-ins. So, and this is all illustrated by myself. 
So definitely check it out. Um, there's also a book by Dr. Stuart Brown called Play, and he goes all in about the neurological benefits as well as the different types of play and the difference between playing with um, as an adult and playing with your child or your pet, um, as well as how play can turn toxic. Uh, you know, too much of a good thing is bad. So, <laughs> so yeah, definitely check that out. There's a few, yeah, plays plays a small niche, but it's there's some stuff out there. Well, this has been wonderful. Thank you, Sarah, so much for joining us today and teaching us Thank about you. mindful play. Furious Sunshine is great from what I can see, and I'm sure we will probably ask to have you back in the future, and I hope you'll be able to join us. Um, let's see here. Just again, um, thank you, and thank you to our attendees for joining us, um, and thank you to everyone. Uh, for tuning in during their afternoon. Hopefully you were able to meditate, um, think about some things that you can do in mindful play. You know, we're going into the weekend here. So do some of those things. Please share the series with um, your friends and family and uh, fill out the form on our website, mhgd.org backslash wellbeing live to be notified of upcoming wellbeing live events and submit more questions. We look forward to having you join us for the next wellbeing live and one last note is that this event has been recorded and should be available later for use. And we feel free to share that with your family and friends and watch it again and again. All right. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I enjoyed it. Great. All right. Goodbye. Bye.